I think uh, the spring has gone, and <laughs> the weather is getting hot, right? Um, uh, the season is very important. Uh, why our God gives us the spring season? Because the spring season gives us the new energy to start again. Uh, and in summer season, uh, what we have to face is the, the energy to let our life be grown up, okay? So as you see in the summer season, there's a lot of uh, green plants and trees and stems that are grown up. So uh, every uh, single season gives us the, the energy which is particularly applying our life. So whenever we see the particular season, that we have to achieve the energy in that season. Otherwise, we do not live in the time of God. All right? So thinking of this uh, the season, let's uh, uh, bless each other. All right? Uh, today's proposition is Akare Mot. Akare Mot. Let's repeat after me. Akare Mot. Once again, Akare Mot. Akare Mot means after death. After death. So this draw portion starts with the contents after the death of Nadab and Abihu, who were the sons of Aharon. Uh, why this Torah portion's name is Acharemot? Uh, because this is essence of our life. Mm. Uh, what do you think? What is your real life? Your life is in spirit or in body? Frank. Of course, right? Uh, so it means after we die, after our death, what? will be happening. That's the essence of the life. Uh, let's see the verse of uh, this Torah portion, uh, Leviticus chapter 16, verse 1. Let's read together. The Lord spoke to Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron, who died when they approached the Lord. So, they are they were trying to approach the Lord, right? Why they are killed, why they are consumed, even if they try to approach God. Frank, have you tried to approach God? Right? When you pray, when you are eager to meet God, there can be approach, right? So, when you pray, suddenly you are killed. This is kind of happening now. Why? Because we normally approach the God with our pattern, with our thought, with our method. So if we try to approach the God with our method, we can be killed because He is a spirit. If you try to approach the God with your perspective of a physical life, God can't accept you. This is the symbol of the death that we can be, uh, we can be receiving in our life as well. So, uh, Nadab and Abihu approached the Lord with their way and their method. So that's why our God said to, uh, again, uh, the, the verse second, the verse two. But our Lord said, the Lord said to Moses, tell your brother Aaron that he is not to come whenever he chooses into the most holy place behind the curtain in front of the atonement cover on the ark or else he will die. For I will appear in the cloud over the atonement cover. So, cloud. Cloud. I'm always confused about spelling. So, anyway. 
Cloud. What is the cloud? Cloud is Anan. Anan. Do you remember the verses of the revelation that our Lord will be coming to you with the cloud? Right? So it's the same. Now God said, I will be appearing in the cloud. So what is the cloud? Anan from Anna. Anna. What is Anna? Anna is afflict yourself. Afflict yourself. What is afflict? Afflict, afflict means you have to put yourself in the presence of suffering. Difficult situation. What is difficult situation? What is the difficult situation in your life? The most difficult part is to wait, right? Uh, everybody wants to get something that you wanted to get in your life. Uh, when you are doing your business, you want to get the, the rewards or money or something that you wanted in your business part as soon as possible. <laughs> That's our sense. That's our life. Normally, we are eager to get. But Anna is afflict yourself means you have to wait for the response from the God which is in invisible word. Invisible word. The most difficult part is to wait for the something that you couldn't see. Right? For example, uh, if you pray uh, very eagerly, uh, you pray, um, uh, okay, for example, you guys are apart from your family in your homeland, right? So you are always eager to meet your family in your land. This is so hard. Why? Because you can't touch, you can't see. But even if uh, we have the face tone nowadays, but it's very hard to uh, wait for the moment that you meet your family physically, right? So afflict yourself means you have to wait for invisible part. So that's why in this trial portion, what our God commanded is you have to fast. Fasting. In the Leviticus chapter 17, God said to us, you have to fast. Why fast is important? What is the fast? Fast is in Ramadan season as well, in Islamic countries, right? Why you are fasting? The fasting means to kill your senses. To eat something means to uh, enjoy your senses, right? When you eat something delicious, you can be happy, right? <laughs> so after our service, we are going to have our meal together. It could be a very pleasure time our, for us. So without eating something, we can't uh, please my senses, uh, basically. So, if you do not eat something, you will die. So, this is the, the most important part of our physical life. If you don't eat something, you will die. So, means you delay, delay, uh, listen carefully, you delay satisfying your uh, your pleasure. You delay feeling your pleasure in your demands. That is a fasting. That is a fasting, which is a called in Hebrew, jom. Jom. So means delay, delay your Demands, I think it's uh, okay, in body. So, this portion 
is all about our life after death. After death. After death, the spirit will be left only. So after death, there will be the reality. Why we are, what we are doing now? We are doing a matter count nowadays. So uh, as you learned, the seven divinity. Uh, shall we? Uh, shall we review once again? What is the first? Hased, right? And second, Gevura. And third, Tiferet. And Nejak. Nejak. And then Hod. Come on. <laughs> Six, it's yes sword, right? Yes sword. And my coat. So now we got into the Gevura week, right? And there's uh, the seven, uh, seven characters here, two. So why we are uh, proclaiming to combine two characters, two divinities? Because I have this one. But do you think that this is the right part of the characteristics that we normally think of the divinity? No. It's a humanity. It's a humanity. But this is divinity. So we have to combine our nature with divine nature so that we can be transformed. Why? Why we are doing this? As we learned, this is the part of the Christ body, right? This is the part of the Christ body. So, if we do not accomplish the body of Christ, what will be left? Uh, what do you think? Uh, what is the, the real life? Our life our life always uh, based on the heavenly life, if we are called the children of God. But if we do not achieve the spiritual body, then we can't enter the, the kingdom of God as well. Now and future, same. Uh, for example, the kingdom of God is here now. But how we can apply this truth? If we accomplish the body of a sp the spiritual body, then after you die, you are immediately going into the spiritual world. Means the world where our God is existing. But if you have Wrong spiritual body, okay? I said the spiritual body has the shape and image as their own. For example, if you accomplish your body as a lewdness or obsceneness, then you will be belonging to that generation after you die. But if you achieve chesed, gevra, things like that, then after you die, you are going into the part of the Hesed and Gevra. Things like that. Because this spiritual body is comprised of only the characteristics, the nature. This is not physical one. This is only invisible one. So invisible one is called nature. Only nature, only characteristics. So we have to be transformed as a divinity. Otherwise, we can't wear the same spiritual body with our Jesus. Then we will be apart from them, apart from him after our death. 
Do you understand? So this is the most important part of our life that we have to achieve. Okay? So in this proposal, what is appeared is to God. Let's see the, the verse 8. The Leviticus chapter 16, verse 8. This is a very important part. See, he is to cast lots for the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other for the scapegoat. Right? So two goats are appeared here. So one goat is, uh, let's erase here. One goat is La Yahweh. La Yahweh. Uh, La Yahweh. So this is a Lamed. Lamed is, uh, is uh, interpreted as four. Okay? Or two. So for Yahweh and the other one, the other goat is La Azazel. La Azazel. La Azazel. What is Azazel? Have you heard about this name? Uh, you heard last year. <laughs> <laughs> but Azazel, um, this is a Oz, okay? This is the Oz. Oz means power. Oz means power. And Azar means to go and send off. Why uh, our God commanded you have to cast lots for the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other for the scapegoat. This goat for Yahweh should be killed. Sacrifice. But this one this one should be sent off to the wilderness and through the, the cliff. Let's see uh, the verse uh, 21, 22. 21, 22. He is to lay both the hands on the head of the live goat. This is uh, the Israelites, or the, uh, let's, just, let's just read it first. Hands on the head of the live goats and confess over it all the weakness and rebellion of the Israelites or their sins and put them on the goat's head. He shall send the goat away into the wilderness in the care of someone appointed, appointed for the task. All right? So, uh, he shall send this goat away into the wilderness. So this is the goat to be sent to wilderness. Okay, let's see the verse one more. Uh, 22nd, 22. The goat will carry on itself or their sins to a remote place and the man shall release it in the wilderness. What does it mean? If we do not have understanding about this La Azazel, we do not understand the events of Jesus Christ as well. Because uh, to the wilderness, let's see the, the Hebrew version. A remote place A remote place is, uh, see, uh, the first sentence and the, the third from the end, the gajara. Uh, gajar, gajar 
means this is a solitary place, solitary land, solitary land. What is the solitary land? Uh, as you learned, we are consisting of we are consisting of his body as a 600,000 pieces, right? But what do you think? This is uh, only one piece. One piece is important or not? One piece is important, right? One piece and one piece and one piece one piece. It should be added into the whole and these, these consist of a whole, right? But if this one piece insists on his own, this is my part, this is my word, this is mine. If this one piece insists on this proclaiming, then it is called solitary man. Solitary man. Because this one is, cannot be combined with any other source. He wants to, uh, he wants to live alone. He, he, he doesn't want to share anything about it. It's like a cancer cell, all right? The cancer cell is always spreading its weakness to the normal cells to destroy the body whole, right? So, this is the, the most important part of uh, the solitary man. So, what our God wants us to know is La Azazel, la, the goat for Azazel means it should be sent off to the solitary land. It should be a part. It should be a part. It is not removed. Can you remove the power of Satan? It's impossible. It's impossible. The only way to live for Yahweh is to be transformed. Your purpose should be transformed. To send off uh, your desire, your obstinacy, your lewdness, which is inside of you as a, the part of the physical world, you have to send off. You have to send off. And go back to the, the 21. There is an appointed man. There is an appointed man. Appointed man is Bayad Ishi. Bayad Ish. In Torah, Ish corresponds to our Lord. So the bridegroom, only the bridegroom take this goat to the solitary land. That's why Jesus Christ was hanging on the cross to be killed as a goat for the La Yahweh and to bring the goat for the La Azazel. Uh, there was a uh, folklore. Folklore is a, like a transmission from the Jews. A uh, long time ago, uh, there was uh, the angels who are called Azazel and Uja. Okay? And they refused to obey God. So that's why they are uh, sentenced to fall down to the earth. So they try to make illegal sexual relationship. So they are born as a Nephilim. Nephilim. So that was the origin of illegal sexual relationship. If we do not remove this perspective of illegal sexual relationship, we have no way to approach God. 
because we normally do this uh, illegal sexual relationship. Uh, Leviticus chapter 16, this is all about day of atonement. Day of atonement. Let's see uh, the verse. Uh, verse from uh, 29, Leviticus chapter 16, verse 29. This is a, to be a lasting ordinance for you on the 10th day of the 7th month. The 7th month is Tishrei, okay? So after this uh, feast, the Feast of Tabernacle comes on the 15th day. Do you remember, right? So you must deny yourself and not do any work, whether native-born or a foreigner residing among us. As a residing among the Israelites, we have to do this, right? And, and 30, because on this day, atonement, okay, on this atonement will be made for you to cleanse you. Then before the Lord, you will be clean from all your sins. So the Leviticus chapter 16 elaborates how you can be cleansed in, your, in, the, in the eyes of the God. And this is called the day of atonement. Let's see the 33. Verse 33, and make atonement for the most holy place. What is that? Make atonement for the most holy place. Because we normally think, I have to be clean. But it is said, make atonement for most holy place. What does it mean? Do you remember what was the most holy place? Most holy place is bedroom between Yahweh, between bridegroom and bride. So if we do illegal sexual relationship, it means we made the bedroom get dirty. Do you understand? That's why you have to make atonement for the most holy place. Otherwise, we are not eligible for entering that place again. That's why Nadab and Abihu were killed because they did sexual relationship, illegal sexual relationship. That's why they are not uh, allowed to enter the place as a bride, as a bride. If your wife did an illegal sexual relationship, can you allow her to enter your bedroom again? No, right? It's the same, it's the same. So that's why make atonement for the most holy place, for the tent of meeting and the altar, and for the priests and all the members of the community. So, 40, Four, uh, 34. This is to be a lasting ordinance for you. Atonement is to be made once a year for all the sins of the Israelites, and it was done as the Lord commanded Moses. So, among the, the seven feasts, only this day of atonement, which is the feast, is only the feast that you have to fast. Other feasts do not require you to fast. Only this, only this day of atonement require you to fast, to get rid of the demands in your body. All right? Um, it is talking about the goats. So let's see the Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. 
When Jesus came to the region of uh, Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? Do you know what is the place? If you visit Israel, uh, there is a uh, Caesarea Philippi still. Okay? So if you visit there, there, were, there is the place where the people who lived that time sacrificed the goats for the, the other gods. Okay? Like Baal, like uh, the other gods. So, for example, this is now temple for other gods uh, in the era, okay? People normally did the sacrifice for the offering to other gods at that time. So, uh, Jesus now came here and he is asking the disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? And Peter said, Chapter 16. Ah, yeah, verse 16. Thank you. <laughs> Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Do you know what does it mean? Now, you do not worship the goat for the Azazel anymore. Because you are worshiping the goat, because, let's just see, um, there was the day to worship the gods before. Leviticus uh, chapter 17. Um, chapter 17, verse 7. Okay. They must no longer offer any of their sacrifices to the goat idols, right? So from that time, it was inherited to the people who lived there, whom they prostitute themselves, right? Prostitute. Prostitute is illegal sexual relationship, right? So... Do not bow down, do not worship, do not uh, make any other sacrifices to the goat idols anymore. So Simon Peter said to and proclaimed to the Jesus that time, you are the son of God, you are the living God. So that proclaim, that proclaim made atonement. To be eligible for entering the most holy place again. You got it? It's very, very important. So that's why you have to proclaim. You have to uh, declare, I am cleansed with my proclaim to enter the most holy again. <clears throat> Sorry. Let's see. Um, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4. For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but sent them to hell, putting them in chains of darkness to be held for judgment. So what is said? Uh, if uh, God did not spare angels, that angels were Azazel and Uzzah, who are sentenced to fall down to the earth to make illegal sexual relationship. All right, and he will do not. Uh, he will do not forgive the angels who did it, who sinned. Right. And next verse. If he did not spare the ancient world when he brought the flood on its ungodly people. So, what is that? The people who made the illegal sexual relationship, 
right? It is talking about it. But protected Noah, a preacher of righteousness, and seven others. So you have to be transformed again, okay? Otherwise, you will not forgiven. Judah chapter 1, verse 6. Judah chapter 1, verse 6. Judah서. And the angels who did not keep their positions of authority, but abandoned their proper dwelling. So, it is written the same. The one who did illegal sexual relationship will not be forgiven. Will not be forgiven. So that's why uh, on this the Day of Atonement, the 10th of Tishrei, the Jews always read the Leviticus chapter 18. Chapter 18 is talking about all the illegal sexual relationship. Let's see the Leviticus chapter 18 from the verse 5. Keep my decrees and laws, for the person who obeys them will live by them, and I'm the Lord. And next verse. No one is to approach any close relative to have a sexual relations. I'm the Lord. And next. Do not dishonor your father by having sexual relations with your mother. She is your mother. Do not have relations with her. And next. Do not have a sexual relations with your father's wife that would dishonor your father, and so on. These all the verses are related to the illegal sexual relationship. All right? So on the day of atonement, you have to correct yourself. You have to make atonement for yourself. Who did illegal sexual relationship? All right? Fredly, have you heard about these contents before? Maybe not. Maybe not. Because without the understanding Torah, we can't get this knowledge. We can't get into the most holy place again. Because you have no wisdom about it. Uh, so, once again, let's see the Galatians chapter 5, verse uh, 24. Galatians chapter 5, verse 24. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Right? What? Jesus Christ have crucified the flesh. The flesh. The flesh is all about your desires for your physical body. Right? So he did it. He did it. So what Apostle, Apostle Paul uh, said to his people again, and First Peter chapter two verse eleven. First Peter chapter two. Dear friends, I urge you, as foreigners and exiles, to abstain from sinful desires which wage war against your soul. Right? Sinful desires. Sinful desires. One more. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. This is the, the most important part of our life that we have to achieve. Through this, He has given us His very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature. What is that? Divine nature. Having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. But what our Jesus Christ did already, he crucified the flesh 
which is always consisting of your desires, evil desires. But what、uh, Peter said, you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. All right? But you have to achieve divine nature. Divine nature. So that you can be、uh, a piece of holiness. Then you can consist of the spiritual body, which you can、uh, be wearing after your death. If you do not complete the spiritual body that you have to wear after you die, where are you going? You will be sent off to the solitary land. This is a kind of a lot. This is a kind of lesson you must learn. Are you going to be with God or are you going to be sent off to the wilderness, which is a solitary land? Choose what? Divine nature is not kind of an option that you did. Divine nature is the most, the thing that you have to achieve in your life. Okay? Let's pray. Let's pray. Uh, <clears throat> remind the lessons that you learned today. What we are doing is we always pursue my desires. We always Demanded my desires in my life so far. But God said to us, as Jesus Christ h a v e crucified the flesh with the desires, you have to send the goats for the Azazel to the solitary land. And you can be cleansed with the goat for the Yahweh. Lord always keeps his eyes on us to be cleansed, to make atonement the most holy place to enter again. But if we have our own method, that's why if we do not approach the most holy place again, We are not eligible for the marriage life with our Lord. Today, let's make atonement. The, sexual, the illegal sexual relationship. Let's correct our way in our life to be transformed to the God's way. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's get up. We always seek our demands to fulfill my desires, my evil desires in my physical life only. But God, please let me have the desires for combining the divinities so that I can be part of your body, I can be part of your soul. So that I can be left behind my death in the physical life to be part of your life. Lord, let me pursue the divinity. Let me pursue your life you did for us. Thank you, Lord. Everything that you have done for our life. Is to send off my evil desires to the solitary land, which is only seeking 
the evil desires. But today, as we learn from the word, we proclaim we will be transformed as a way of God who can enter the most holy place, which is a bad place, a bad room, with you forever, so that we can be invited again, we can be called the bride again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, service is finished, okay? Let's go down to the sixth floor. <laughs>